common good should exercise control over the economic status of the people. With all due humility, and as a church-going Catholic convert, a devotional convert, I adore the Holy Father, I still must completely disagree. I still must disagree. Look at godless communism, godless socialism. Now, the Pope's evangelism has, fortunately, more than that brief economic section. And that evangelism regarding cultural, moral, and religious reform is, for me, the great part of this exhortation. But we must look at the whole thing. Let's talk. Here now is Rusty Reno. He's the editor of First Things Magazine and Michael Matheson Miller, director of Poverty Cure and Research Fellow with the Acton uh, Institute. Gentlemen, uh, uh, welcome to the show. Rusty, let me just read this Re real quick. I, I read this over the radio. I talked to Father Sirico at great length over the radio for an hour this past weekend. In the Gospel of Matthew, we find Jesus warning us how our lives will be judged. His words are pointed. We are to feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the prisoner. For what we do to the poor and the destitute, quote, the least of these, my brethren, says Jesus, we do that to the Lord himself. Rusty, I agree with that. I agree with that, heart and soul, the war against poverty. I agree with that. But I cannot agree with Reagan and Thatcher and Pope John Paul II and what they did against godless communism and the evils of the state. That is not going to be the way out. That is what puzzled me about what Pope Francis said. That is what troubled me about it. What's your take? Well, well I think we've got to be sure we don't fight uh, the last war. It seems to me that Pope Francis is responding to the fact that global capitalism is triumphant and we have to deal with its limitations and its excesses and that's going to require something more than just more uh, uh, free market uh, measures. But doesn't the state have excesses? I mean, look, did oh, we course. learn that from the Soviet Union and, you know, all these other Soviet satellites? I, I just was so surprised because that language, I, I understand, the, the Pope's job is not to proselytize about free market capitalism. Okay, I get that. I get that. And the issue here is poverty, and we're going to get to some other moral and spiritual issues. But look, right. you look at the numbers, you look at the numbers here. The UN study, extreme poverty has fallen 43% in the last 20 years. The World Bank, again, extreme poverty uh, has fallen uh, by about 25% in the last 30 years. 163% increase in uh, world growth among the developing countries. In other words, that part of the equation's working. What's not working? What's well, not working, what the, Michael Miller, is, uh, and this is my, what's not working is the move to secularism. We are moving away right. from morality and spiritualism and religiosity. Now, that is what Pope Paul John II, and that is what Benedict talked about. And why is Francis not harping on that? Well, I think he is. I mean, I think this is a key point. I mean, look, look let's, let's not say here, let's not try to spin Francis and say he's pro-capitalist, because he surely isn't. Right. Um, part of this is he, he grew up in Argentina, uh, where his experience of capitalism is crony capitalism, big business, big government, big interest groups, all working together, <clears throat> and really excluding the poor. But I think if you look at his document, he's talking about consumerism. He's talking about really the underlying problems is that, look, I'm a free marketer like you, Larry, but we can agree that a free market perfectly run that's secular and hedonist still kills souls. It still destroys lives. It doesn't bring joy. I don't think by it kills souls. I don't believe that. I think other things kill souls. Honestly, really. Right, but, 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 but without, but, but without, I if it's without to... a moral underpinning, it, it, yeah, without a moral be. underpinning, don't everything becomes focused on matter. You know, Adam Smith, the great churchman, yeah, before he right. wrote The Wealth of Nations, <laughs> he wrote The Church. Theory of Moral Sentiments, okay? And right. I want to go back to Rusty's piece. We're not going to have time to do this justice. But look, just think. Children born out of wedlock, the rise in the divorce rate, the so-called right. sexual revolution, the decline in the culture of marriage, and a million other things. These are the things, not prosperity, but these are the things, Rusty, that we need to evangelize about. And we all must pray and have it in our heads and minds and hearts and souls that we must improve. Well, but I think that, Larry, what you're saying really reinforces the Pope's point. Because if we think if we become too rah-rah about capitalism, what we're really saying is that wealth creation, which capitalism is supremely good at doing, is really the be-all and end-all of human life. 
and that reinforces the secularist mentality. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Gentlemen, I hope you'll come back. There's much more to discuss there. Rusty Thanks Reno. Thanks so much, Larry. Michael Thanks. Miller, appreciate it very much. That's it for tonight's Thanks. show. Thanks for watching. It's the moral and religious and spiritual deficit we have to work on. But let's not damage the economy in the process. I'm Kudlow. We'll have more on this later.